video lesson 3.3, the transformations of rotations. Uh, we're going to focus in this video on angle of rotation and center of rotation. So first thing to do is uh, we have to talk about is uh, the fact that we can rotate in two different directions. We have a counterclockwise rotation and a clockwise rotation. All right, so that would be uh, the abbreviation for counterclockwise would be CCW and clockwise would be CW. So if we're actually rotating here counterclockwise, that would be to the left direction, right? When we are rotating, so for example here, let's say we're going from here uh, to here in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, while we go in that leftward direction, we can represent that uh, both by using the abbreviation CCW if we're describing it, or we can use it symbolically uh, with uh, a number. So in this case, it would be a 90 degree rotation. So 90 degrees counterclockwise, um, counter or I can use that as uh, just the number 90. Now, a counterclockwise would be represented with a positive integer. All right, a positive integer. Whereas over here in a counter, I mean, I'm sorry, a clockwise rotation, that would be a negative um, representation uh, with that number. So that would be a negative 90 degrees. All right. Uh, why is that? That uh, has to do with the uh, coordinate uh, plane. So in that coordinate plane, we have quadrant one is up here, quadrant two is to the left, then quadrant three and then quadrant four. So the quadrants go in that counterclockwise direction, uh, which would indicate a, uh, what we represent as a positive uh, integer there. So when we're dealing with that, remember CCW, counterclockwise, positive number, uh, clockwise would be a negative number. Again, you can either use the negative and positive symbols or just use the abbreviations or the words counterclockwise and clockwise uh, when doing that. You don't need to do both. All right, uh, with those, just one or the other. All right, so let's actually determine the angle of a rotation. So in this case, we need to first be able to identify corresponding sides. So I'm going to highlight here uh, two corresponding sides. So again, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to specifically say here, um, I'm going to use AD. So this would be AD. And I'm also going to use um, A prime, D prime. I'm doing that because they intersect at uh, our point of rotation here, so D. So it just makes it easy and convenient if I already have um, those two points touching my point of rotation, it makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, we'd have to draw a line segment to those specific places, uh, which we'll show in that next uh, example there. But I have now have an angle, all right? I have AD and A prime, D prime, and they create an angle here. So in this case, uh, I can now measure the distance from one, uh, this yellow line, to this green line here. So using my protractor, I'm going to set my pointer on the center of rotation there, that point of rotation, which would be um, the D or D prime. I'm now going to rotate this until the bottom of my protractor here is perfectly in line with uh, this green line here. So in this case, I'm going to do turn this here. Again, trying to be as accurate as human as possible, like so. All right, now the yellow line now goes through here. All right, from there, again, let me line this up perfectly there. There we go, much better. Um, here, so the this yellow line now goes through my protractor, and now I can actually measure it. Now, since I'm going from a right to the left direction here, uh, based on my angle, I'm using the inside of my protractor. Yours might be different. Um, but whatever one it is, just make sure you use the appropriate thing. It either be the inside or the outside. Just make sure you start at zero and go from there. So uh, in this case, it looks like uh, about 75 degrees. Uh, in this case, um, actually 76 degrees uh, would be a better choice. So this would be a 76 degree rotation here. Let me actually get the pen. 76 degree rotation, and I need to indicate which direction. So I'm either going to use the words um, in order to do that. So in this case, we go from the solid to the dotted. So this would be a clockwise. Again, I can either write it out or use the symbols. So that would be a 76 degree clockwise rotation. Or again, I could have used just a um, negative 76 degrees. That would have also indicated the same thing. All right. So over here in the second example, uh, you'll notice that the point of rotation 
is, which is here at E, is not uh, on or does not touch both of the uh, images. So that's okay. We just got to do an extra step. We just need to draw a line segment from each of the corresponding points to the, uh, the point of rotation. So I'm going to use D because it's nice and close. I'm going to use D. So I'm going to draw from D to E. And then I'm going to, again, draw from uh, E to D prime or D prime to E, whichever way you go. And now we're going to find the angle that those two lines, uh, segments make. And that's how we're going to find it. Now, I can already tell right now without even doing anything that when I put my protractor here, up over here, I am clearly not going to have a line that's long enough to kind of measure the information. So I'm going to extend one of my line segments and just draw it further out. So using your straight edge, I'm just going to make that a longer line segment so it's easier for me to be able to read when it's inside um, and I put my protractor on. So, all right, so I'm going to line this up again, meaning as accurately as I possibly can, putting the center on the point of rotation. I'm now going to rotate this until I line it up exactly with the edge of my circle. Uh, since I rotated, uh, I'm sorry, since I extended this line, I'm going to rotate this around here and put, line up the bottom of the protractor with this side, since that's the line I extended. If you had done the other side, that's perfectly fine. You would just, uh, there you go, uh, I just have it spinning around the other way. That's all. So now here, again, I'm just trying to be as accurately as I possibly can. There we go. Uh, and now I look here. Again, I'm, since I'm measuring here is my bottom, I'm opening up from the inside. So this is um, zero is on the inside of my protractor. And that puts me right here, which crosses at uh, the 50 degree mark. All right, so that means I've now rotated uh, 50 degrees. And again, we just have to indicate in what direction. Again, solid is my pre-image, the dotted is my image, so we're going in this uh, counterclockwise direction, like so. Again, or a positive 50 would have been uh, if we were doing it using the symbols. Now, with that, let's just make sure we understand how to write this symbolically. So again, we use a, a capital R for rotation. We're going to put the point that we rotated around, so in this case, E, right, comma, and then I'm going to put the degree. So here, uh, I would just use 50 because it was a counterclockwise direction. If I'm doing this for my first example over here, this would have been a capital R. We would have said uh, D or D prime would have worked. It would not have mattered because it's the same point, comma, and I would have used a negative 76 uh, degrees for that. So uh, that would be a way to symbolically show uh, both those situations, again, or it could be written out in words, but you have to be able to identify both situations. All right? Take this opportunity to pause the video and try that on your own, and that would be finding the actual angle uh, of rotation, or the degree that you are rotating by. Okay, so next we're actually going to find that point of rotation, which we refer to as the center of rotation. So we're going to actually find the, that exact spot, that exact point. All right. So in order to do that, um, first I need to identify corresponding points. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to draw myself a line between corresponding points. I'm going to use a dotted line here uh, just to you know, indicate the difference between the lines. It does not need to be a dotted line. But I'm going to use C and C prime. So I'm going to connect C and C prime here. Um, and those I'm connecting those two because they're corresponding. And I know that because it's C and the prime version of that uh, for C prime. Again, if you if the points aren't labeled for you, you need to identify uh, two points that are clearly corresponding um, when when working with this. All right. And once we have that, all we're going to do is we're going to do a perpendicular bisector of that line segment. So I'm going to come over here, put my compass on C. Again, as long as I stretch more than halfway, all right, I will be fine. So I'm going to come out here, I'm going to make an arc above that line segment, and I'm going to make an arc below that line segment, like so. Flip my compass, do it from C prime. Once again, not changing the size of my compass. I'm going to see where those arcs intersect with the two arcs I made previously. 
Uh, and now I'm going to connect those using my straight edge. I'm going to connect those two points together like so. Again, accurately going between uh, the two intersection points. All right, so there's a perpendicular bisector of that line segment CC prime. All right, so now I know that my center of rotation is going to be somewhere on here, right? Because uh, in order for it to be the rotation, it's going to be equidistant from that scenario. But uh, I don't know where. So I need to do it again between another pair of corresponding points, right? So it doesn't matter which two you use. Uh, again, as long as they're corresponding, I'm going to choose here. Uh, let's do D and D prime. So I'm going to, again, draw myself a line segment. Let's do it in a different color here so it's clear. So I'm going to do uh, D and D prime here. All right, so once again, I'm going to construct a perpendicular bisector of this line segment. Again, more than halfway, right? That's what I need. So uh, again, let's do this in, uh, in green for the arcs here so it's easier to see. So I'm going to draw an arc above and draw an arc below. I'm going to flip, do the same thing over here, see where they intersect, like so. All right, now I should have drawn that first one a little longer because it's not fully intersecting there. So let's first make that a little bit neater and nicer, like so. All right, so now again, I draw my line segment and I'm going to draw that between from one intersection through the other like so and you're going to use a straight edge to do so now i want to see where they intersect it happens to work out that that uh, intersection of the two uh, perpendicular bisectors also intersected at that specific arc that's just a coincidence it's not always going to happen like that um, in in all situations but here i now have this exact location right here again it's where the blue perpendicular line and the uh, red perpendicular bisector where they intersect, not necessarily the arcs, right? It's where they intersect. That right there is my center of rotation. Okay. Now, if I needed to figure that out in terms of an actual angle or degree, again, that's when you would connect your corresponding points to that center and then measure the angle to find the actual uh, degree or the angle of rotation. All right, but that's how you find the center of rotation. So take this opportunity to pause the video and try that on your own and uh, in, in your notepad.